Hello, this is Steve Lentz with Discover Options and Option View Systems with a prepared mind. Today, we'll look at the market likelihood report for March 5th, 2016. Just as a reminder, you could go to the discoveroptions.com website, go to the blog link on the top right, that'll take you to our blog, and you'll see the prepared mind for March 7th by Frank Fahey, giving you many, many insights into the current market. What I'd like to do is go over the current market condition and we'll take a look at the likelihood of the market going up, down, or staying the same, or chopping, chopping around for the next one, two, or three weeks. What we like to do is look at the price action, the trend, and the overbought or oversold status. So on the right side, you can see here the uh, Metastock code that we use for price action. And all we're looking at is the relationship of today's bar with yesterday's or Friday's to Thursday's. The high is higher than uh, the previous day's high. The low is higher than the previous day's low. And you can see that here. All right, right there. Okay. Um, yesterday's close is greater than yesterday's open. And today's close is greater than today's open or Friday's, excuse me. All right. So that's price action that we like to look at. Next, we look at trend. And we're just looking at a simple 65 period moving average there. That's what the uh, Wall Street Journal uses. And we'll take a look at that as well. Overbought and oversold, we're using a 15.3 stochastic. And so uh, uh, really the question here is then since January 2000, how often has this same scenario occurred and what did the market do? What did the market do? So I'm going to present the likelihood report right here. But to interpret all this, we're going to back up. I'm going to explain this a little bit. But I just want you to see here that we have, um, uh, you'll see the columns, upper 5, upper 10, 15, lower 5, lower 10, lower 15. Um, uh, I'm going to show you this in the context of volatility bands and exactly what we're talking about here. This is called edge analysis. And to explain that report, we need to first of all understand the historical distribution of price. We need to understand the distribution of price after a scenario, a technical scenario develops, much like what I just showed you. And if the two are significantly different, we're going to then assume a potential tradable edge exists, and we'll try and make heads or tails of that. Let's take a look at the historical distribution of price first. Volatility bands, all right? We're going to look at three sets of volatility bands, upper and lower 5, 10, and 15-day volatility bands. These bands are measured one standard deviation from the close, we use a 20-day historical volatility number to determine the width of those bands. And these are, of course, log normally distributed. Here's an example here. These are 10-day volatility bands set from the close. And the question here is, is over the next 10 days, will price go up and hit the upper band, go down and hit the lower band, or kind of stay right in the middle? OK, let's take a look. There you go. Over the next 10 days, you can see price clearly went up and hit the upper band, actually, uh, the first day. All right. Now, look at the current close that you'll see there, kind of up near where, around 11.15 or so. Did price go up and hit the upper band, the lower band, or stay in the middle? Let's look carefully here, advancing forward. And you can see that price tried to go down there to about 1085, didn't quite hit that band. And so in this case, price hit neither. It certainly didn't go up and hit that upper band. Again, we're looking at this bar and that close. And you can see price really never did hit either of those two bands that you see there. Okay, so here's the idea. From every one of the closes going back to Jan of 2000, we're going to record how often price struck the upper and the lower 5, 10, and 15-day bands. That will determine our historical distribution. 
okay in the SPX okay after Friday March 4th here are the statistics going back 4,000 closes or so okay the SPX hit the upper band as you can see there on the left over 29 and a half percent of the time okay the 10 day that was a five day band the 10 day band on the upside roughly 23 percent upper 15 day uh, band it would go up and hit that roughly about almost well 22 22.71 percent then how often did it go down and hit the lower bands the lower five day band was about 30 percent 30.08 lower 10 was about 29 point six six percent and then the lower 15 day band was over 32 and a half percent so that's the historical distribution that the SPX typically does from a single any given close those are the, uh, the those are the st statistics as they are now let's look at how often price was in Friday's situation and what it did Okay, what we do is we're going to go back and look at, and here you have three straight days. Now we're going to take non consecutive signals here, but we're going to lay out the volatility bands and we're going to record what happened for each one of these scenarios uh, going back when the, price, when the market was in this exact same scenario going back. All right, and we're going to look at the distribution as of the close Friday. You know, in a similar situation going back, we're going to look at what happened when price was in this same scenario and price went above Friday's high. We're going to look at what happened to the market when price went below uh, the low on Friday in that same situation going back. And here is the market likelihood report. All right, let's see. No, I don't have annotation. That's okay. All right. Take a real good look. At the top, you have the historical distribution. Okay, I switched that slide out. I noted it was a little bit off there. But what you'll see here is at the top, and I'm assuming you can hopefully see my uh, mouse there, all right, at the top you have the historical distribution. Then you have the distribution as of Friday's close. That type of situation occurred 277 times in the past. And of those 277 times that it occurred, the upper five uh, day band got hit over 13% of the time. Now that's much lower than the upper five on a historical distribution basis. Do you see that? 29 and a half compared to 13. So it would appear that in this situation, the market typically does not go up another standard deviation near as often as it has historically. You know, you know, over 4,000 signals. Of these 277, it hit the 10-day band over just over 15.5% of the time instead of 23. 15-day on the upside, 16, 16.6 16 compared to 22.7. So it's hitting the upper bands far less often. Now, how about on the lower bands? Did it go down and hit the lower bands? No. It hit those lower bands less often as well. So it would appear that the as of the close Friday, of it's we've had that same situation occur 277 times in the past. And typically what happens is price will stay within the bands much more often um, than historically just on a random basis. Uh, just pick any close. Okay. Now, if on Monday price exceeds Friday's high, okay, you can see then there were 172 situations where price exceeded the high on this exact same situation setup.
And look at here. Price hit the upper bands, all three of them, far, again, far less often than historically. And it hit the lower bands as well, far less often his, than historically and less often than just simply at the close. So if it goes up and it goes above the high, it would appear that we're in then for more of a range-bound market. That's what the uh, statistically in the past, that's what's happened more often. Occasionally, uh, uh, you know, of course, one time in five, it went down and hit that lower 10 period uh, band on the 15, but far less often than just randomly. If price exceeds Friday's low, okay, if, if, it ha if that occurs, you can see actually it gets more volatile and it'll go up and hit the upper band more often than, uh, than uh, either at the close or just if it went up above the high. Very, very interesting. Also, it would go down and hit the lower one. So if it goes down below the low, we're in for more volatility than if it goes up above the high. That's pretty clear here. It's going to fly around and hit the bands more often than if it goes above uh, Friday's high. There were 148 of those uh, situations. So that is it. Here's the code for Metastock to delineate exactly where we are uh, in, in Friday, March 4th's close. Okay, folks, I'm Steve Lentz with Discover Options. Thank you very much. Until next time, have a great week, a great week of trading. Bye-bye.